Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is gonna be a big Legends of Tomorrow update. They were doing upfronts for international TV buyers and the actors revealed some more details about the show. It was actually at the CTV upfronts and if you're wondering about, you know, where, where it's gonna air in the world, it'll be available all the places that The Flash and Arrow are available. It's been selling really well internationally. So first really big detail, season one is gonna be 15 episodes long and there probably will be a season two. The CW hasn't ordered a second season yet. You know, usually they wait till after the first couple of episodes to see how a show's doing. But it's being planned out just like Arrow and The Flash are, so it'll keep going as long as they want it to keep going. It's going to start in January whenever Arrow and Flash come back. Now, the official date isn't confirmed, but Arrow and The Flash come back about the third week in January, so that's probably when it's going to start. I know a lot of you are asking, why is it only 15 episodes? That's a totally weird number. Well, I, I think there's a lot of evidence in the way they pitched the series. Mark Guggenheim said that if The Flash is supposed to feel like a one-hour movie each week, Legends is supposed to feel like a one-hour summer blockbuster every week. And it's really hard to up the level of spectacle and special effects every week if you have to spread your budget across 23 episodes. What they've probably done is the same thing that Agent Carter did, where you reduce the number of episodes that you produce, but you get the same budget you would for a full series. A full series order can be anything from like 18 to 24 episodes. So what the CW probably did is like, okay, we'll give you the money for 23 episodes, just like we would for any other series, like The Flash or Arrow, you know, similar budget. You produce fewer episodes, and you get to spend way more money on each episode just to make it that much crazier looking, that, that much more bigger and badass. It's just that whenever Agent Carter aired, they budgeted out, you know, around like 13 episodes, like you would a limited series. They only produced eight, so they got to spend almost twice as much money for each episode. That doesn't mean that Legends is always going to be 15 episodes long, but it'll always probably be a, like a slightly reduced run so they can spend a little bit more money on each episode. And the really important thing to remember is that 15 number, because Arrow and The Flash last year only aired 14 episodes in the back half. So you see where I'm going here, you know, there are going to be a lot of crossovers between all three shows. What they might do is the same thing they did with the Arrow and The Flash finale this year, where the characters cross over, and then like in the finale of the second show, everything gets resolved. So we might have some issue like in the last episode of Arrow that the people help out with from the other shows. Then that story kind of carries over into the Flash finale the week after that. And then the week after that in, in like the third week in Legends of Tomorrow, everything gets resolved. So you have a lot of overlapping stories and there's a reason why each show doesn't have their finale in the same week. Speaking of which, we have no idea what day it's going to air on. You know, it'll probably air on a different day from Arrow and the Flash just so they can maximize crossover potential. I'm thinking it's either going to be Monday or it's going to be like Thursday. It all just comes down to like what they want the show to compete against. The problem with Mondays are is that the CW is a big fan of that 8 o'clock time slot. Currently, that's where Supergirl is going to be airing on CBS. So if Legends of Tomorrow were to air on Mondays at 8 p.m., it would be competing with Supergirl. And I don't think that they want to do that. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, it's just that the same people that make Arrow the Flash and Legends of Tomorrow also make Supergirl. So like they, they want them all to do well. Thursday and Friday are just like the logical places to stick that just because Sunday night is so competitive with like Walking Dead and way more popular shows. Friday is kind of like a graveyard of TV. That's like where you send a TV show when you want it to die. So I just, I feel like Thursday is the best option after that. That way, if something happened on The Flash on Tuesday, it could carry over into Arrow the next day. And then the day after that, they could solve the problem. So if they wanted to, they could tell like an entire self-contained three-part story in a single week. That feels like a really badass movie, which is what they're kind of trying to create. They're trying to create like a movie type universe on TV. I know there are a lot of questions about like the big crossovers because we had Flash versus Arrow and we have Brave and the Bold. They're going to keep doing that with Arrow and the Flash. But now that we have Legends, they're probably going to do like one big Flaro type crossover and then a couple more minor ones. Meaning that you'll have an episode where everybody's in, like, like the pilot, probably everybody's going to be in that first episode. After that though, whenever characters cross over, it'll probably be on their own. So like you'll have a Flash episode of Legends of Tomorrow, then you'll have like an Arrow episode of Legends of Tomorrow. For the most part though, Barry and Oliver will stay on their own shows just because Legends is going to revolve around its main actors, which is, you know, like the White Canary, the Atom, Firestorm. Victor Garber, the guy that plays Martin Stein, actually said a little bit about what's going on with Firestorm. So he kind of confirmed that Firestorm would appear in the first episode of The Flash Season 2, just is a follow-up to like that big, you know, universe-altering time vortex. And he and Ronnie Raymond would appear in the first episode of Legends of Tomorrow, and then, and then they'd probably go their separate ways. He didn't say anything about Ronnie Raymond dying, but I know everyone's wondering why Robbie Amell isn't on the spin-off show. 
And it's probably just because his film career is taking off and he has a bunch of conflicts. Seriously, since the Tomorrow People ended, he's been shooting a ton of movies. So he probably just wasn't able to sign up for the full series. So they had to write a story around that to explain why he wasn't around. Mark Guggenheim did say that they wouldn't put like one half of Firestorm on Legends of Tomorrow without allowing him to do Firestorm things. So even when Ronnie leaves, Martin Stein will still be doing Firestorm stuff, meaning that we'll probably have to go to Jason Rush. Like I said, that doesn't confirm that Ronnie's going to die or anything, but in the comics, it's just that Jason Rush only became Firestorm when Ronnie died. That was during the Identity Crisis storyline. That was actually, you know, a long time ago. It seems like for now, like the Flareoverse, you know, Legends, Arrow, and The Flash are sticking with the paradigm that Firestorm requires two people to operate. One person to be the body, and one mind to drive the body. DC changed that a long time ago in the comics. They, they just they made it so that Jason Rush and Ronnie Raymond can both be Firestorm on their own. They, they don't need Martin Stein. They even did like the Transformers thing where like when Ronnie and Jason both become Firestorm, they can combine to form like a super giant mega Firestorm, which is kind of funny. They are totally not going to do that on the TV show. They're just way too ridiculous. The mystery character that could be Jason Rush is the Jay Jackson character. That could be like a, like a placeholder name, just like they did with Ted Kord earlier this year. He ended up being Ray Palmer instead. The reasoning behind turning Ted Kord into Ray Palmer on Arrow was, was a little bit different. That was like a, like a DC executive decision. They're just like, we have other plans for Ted Kord. You can't use Blue Beetle. It's kind of a bummer because I feel the way Brandon Routh's character worked was designed for Ted Kord. It's just that that storyline, you know, like the Felicity Ray storyline was was meant to be a little bit lighter, a little bit more awkward. That is Ted Kord through and through. Ray Palmer has a little bit of a harder edge. Brandon Routh has done a great job of, of making that character his own, but I, I feel like it's going to take most of Legends of Tomorrow to develop him. But just going back to Firestorm, you know, I just I feel like the only reason they have for not announcing who this mystery Jay Jackson character is going to be, like the comic book character he's playing, is that it, it's a big plot spoiler for Firestorm. Like the JJ in Jay Jackson is supposed to be a reference to the RR of Ronnie Raymond. That's just a theory though. And remember, even if it is Jason Rush and he becomes part of Firestorm, it doesn't mean that they have to kill off Ronnie Raymond. Robbie Mel is just like too big of an actor for them to throw away. So they'll probably find a way for him to come back in the future. Here's my big question for you guys though. Do you feel like Jay Jackson, this Jay Jackson character, is really supposed to be Jason Rush and he'll become part of Firestorm? I know a lot of you are also asking about Arthur Darvill's Rip Hunter character. I am going to do a separate bonus video for him, but there are a couple big storylines that you can read to prepare. There's this one called Time Master's Vanishing Point. It came after Final Crisis whenever Darkseid's Omega Beam sent Batman back in time. Rip Hunter assembled a team to time travel to try and find him. There's also this other series just called Time Masters. It's from the early 90s. The really cool thing about Rip Hunter is that he is Booster Gold's son, nicest douchebag time traveler in the DC Universe. A while ago in the comics, they, they actually explained why Booster Gold has to be such a douchebag. It's really just an act so that people don't know what his true purpose is. Booster is like the secret origin of the Time Masters. Obviously, Time Masters is Rip Hunter, but Booster Gold gives birth to Rip Hunter, who gives birth to the Time Masters. So, Booster Gold himself, very important in the history of the universe. As for the big villain, Vandal Savage, I'm, I'm going to do a separate video for him real soon. A real good story for him to read is DC 1 million. That's like a three part story. So it's, it's pretty small. There's DC Universe Presents Volume 2 Vandal Savage. That's all about his daughter. It's like a, a very Hannibal Lecter, Silence of the Lambs type story. And then there's Demon Knights, which is a story set during medieval times in the DC Universe. Yeah, actually, you know what? Demon Knights, that's the best Vandal Savage story. So just start there. I will talk more about some of these stories in my Vandal Savage video, but my next video will probably be that Rip Hunter video, so be sure to subscribe to get that. I'll try and post that next week. I feel like talking about Legends of Tomorrow is like a good warm-up for Doctor Who, which is actually going to start later this summer. Actually, most of you guys, if you've never watched Doctor Who before, let me know just so I can adjust my videos accordingly. I'm not really going to do stuff for that till like July or August, so don't worry about that yet. But in case you guys didn't see in my Guardians 2 video that I did yesterday, I'm doing a new weekly Marvel and DC giveaway. That's two different giveaways every week. And it'll start whenever I post my Marvel and DC videos next week. You know, whichever first ones there are. So just be sure to check out any Marvel or DC videos that I post next week for details. I am working on an Arrow Season 4 video that should post later tonight. But while you guys wait for that, you can click here to learn all about Mirror Master coming to Season 2 of The Flash. And you can click here to learn about some of my favorite Batman stories from decade to decade. Arkham Knight is like right around the corner. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.